Hello everybody, my name is Rebecca Grace and today we are going to be looking at adding a drop down box to your Squarespace website. So the first thing you need to do is actually add the uh, content of your drop down box. We're going to do this as if it's an FAQ section. So a lot of people like to have the FAQ section where you see a question, they click on it and it shows the answer. Especially if you have a ton of information, it might just, you know, condense it a little bit so that people can see all of the options and questions that they may have. So the first thing we're going to want to go to is pages. You're going to want to create your, your page. So I have like an FAQ page here. I'm going to click edit. And the easiest thing to do when you're setting up the layout of a page is actually to set it up using spacer blocks. So I want two columns of FAQ questions. So I'm actually going to use four spacer blocks. So I'm just clicking here, clicking spacer, till I have four spacer blocks. I'll delete this text box here. And then I'm going to drag, click, and drag until I see the line come up on the side. That means the spacer block is going to be placed where that line is. I let go. And you can see now I have a space above and below and two columns here. Then I can create my um, columns underneath of that and delete the spacer blocks after. It just really helps lay everything out. For some reason, spacer blocks are a little bit easier to, to maneuver. So I'm going to click here. And to create our drop-down box, we're going to use Markdown, the Markdown block. So I'm going to click Markdown. And I'm going to do that on both sides. So now I have two uh, columns of my questions. Okay, so if I edit my first one, you're going to copy and paste the following code. And what this code does is it has a spot for your question. So this is the question. That text there is what you would edit to put in your question or whatever you want to appear in the box. Um, and then where I have this is paragraph one of the answer, paragraph two of the answer, that is what's going to appear when it drops down. So you notice this is what will happen and then this will drop down. I've added a couple extra things in here um, that you're welcome to keep. If you're adding more questions, um, so you're not just going to have one beside the other, you might want to have a uh, this code here which gives a little space between them um, just to help space everything out and make it look nice. Um, so you can kind of copy and paste this underneath for as many questions as you have. I've also included a class called box so that later we can style this to actually have a box around it. Um, so if you want to keep that. And I've added in this code here which gives this arrow. Um, so you're welcome to take that out if you don't want the arrow. Um, or you can add in your own, own other little arrow. But I just felt like it helps direct people as to what to do in that section if they click on this there's more information underneath. Okay, I've also added in these and the asterisks here and that makes it a quote and italicized and I think that just helps the second part stick out a little bit better. Um, but if you don't want those, obviously you can delete those out. So you can play within this um, obviously to edit it for what you would like. So I'm going to put the same thing into my second block here. So you can see this is what the question will look like. It has a question and then underneath is the answer. So once I've inputted what I actually want to be in the content of my drop down box, I'm going to delete these extra spacer blocks here. Okay, I like to keep one above and below just to space out my sections. I'm going to click save. And now we want to style this. So I'm going to go back into design, custom CSS, and then you can copy and paste the following code. Okay. And I can explain what this does, so you're welcome to edit and customize it. This first section here is the title. Um, so it is a markdown block, the title is automatically H2, heading 2. So if you don't want it to follow that, um, you can edit what's in here to match how you want that to be styled, but it's automatically um, heading to here. So I've changed the font size. 
I've given it a background color of this blue, but I want the text to be white. So the background color is blue, but the actual color of the text is white. Okay. Then I've styled the box, which is this blue section here. Um, I've added a little bit of padding, which I can show you what that does. If you take it away, it's just it really squishes right to the text. So by having that in, it just gives it a little bit of space. And I've added an outline that's a little bit off. That's this extra little blue line on the outside, um, just to give it a little bit more flair. Okay, so once you've customized this to be how you like, um, click Save. And now we need to make it have an action. So the markdown box gives the content, the CSS gives the style, and now we need to add um, some JavaScript to give it an action. So we're going to go back to design um, and back out to settings, advanced, code injection. Okay. And in here, you're going to copy and paste the following code. And you should see now that when you click, your answers come up. When you click again, they disappear. Okay. Now there's one more thing we need to make sure we do, and that is to turn off Ajax loading. So we're going to go back to the home, go to design, site styles, and you're going to scroll down until you see in site loading, enable Ajax loading, we want to make sure that is clicked off. The reason for that, Ajax loading allows the page to still show things if the entire site is not loaded. And that's to help with page speed times. So particularly if you have a lot of images and things like that, it will still show parts of the website even if not everything is fully loaded up. Um, so that's usually something I want to have on. However, if you have this on, it may load the page with all of your questions um, showing and they actually have to refresh the page in order for the action to work. So by turning this off, um, it won't show this section until that um, the questions and all the action, the JavaScript is loaded. Without it, you'll actually have to refresh in order for that action to be prevalent. Um, so you need to make sure you turn that off or else the, the drop-down action won't work. Okay, so that is how you add a drop-down box to your Squarespace website.